the Wood Report and the Moyne Report. No matter where the story starts, about how the vote was won in Trinidad and Tobago, these two reports, bearing the names of two conservative British politicians, are sure to enter the conversation. Edward Frederick Lindley Wood, 1st Earl of Halifax, and Walter Edward Guinness, 1st Baron Moyne. Each came to Trinidad and Tobago on different missions and at different times of heightened public unrest and upheaval. E.F.L. Wood was the Parliamentary Undersecretary of State for the Colonies. He arrived in 1921 in the midst of the crippling strikes that started two years before by dock workers in Port of Spain. The Wood Commission canvassed a broad range of interest groups in Jamaica, St. Kitts, Nevis, Antigua, Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Barbados, Grenada, Trinidad, and what was then known as British Guyana. Of all the countries, Trinidad proved to be the challenge. The question of representation in Trinidad is more difficult than in any other colony. Trinidad is the one community which appeared largely to lack any homogeneous public opinion. The Wood Commission proposed recommendations that would grant constitutional change without threatening the governor's power. A voice, a voice. That's what they want. Give them a voice. We will maintain control. The vote was granted only to owners of property with a minimum value of $12,000 and individuals with an income of at least $19,200 per annum. These conditions eliminated all but about 6% of the population. With conditions unrelieved, the tensions built up to the point of explosion. In 1937, labor riots broke out in Trinidad and across the colonies of the British West Indies. The labor riots were a genuine wake-up call. Stunned by the violence, the British government dispatched another royal commission, headed this time by Lord Moyne. The Moyne report on the desperate conditions in the British West Indian colonies became infamous for being so scathing of British neglect that it was hidden for five years. Weakened by World War II, the British government moved swiftly to implement several of the Moyne Commission's recommendations regarding welfare, health and education, among other things. Public opinion would push the British government to issue an order. Going beyond EFL Wood and Lord Moyne and their teams, Trinidad and Tobago would go to the polls on July 1st, 1946, in its first election under universal adult suffrage. <laughs> <laughs> 